Imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. At night, you're in your tent, you hear noises outside. So naturally you come outside to see what's going on and you see hundreds if not thousands of people leaving the camp of Imam Hussain. For a split second, your eyes fall onto the face of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and you see him looking at his brother in sadness and his brother looking onto the people in even more sadness. So there and then you decide you're going to stay, knowing what's going to happen to you when the morning comes. So now it's the 10th of Muharram, the day of Ashura. You, Muslim, have now become the 73rd companion of Abba Abdullah al Hussain. Imagine you walking up to the Imam and asking him what to do and he gives you the choice. So he says to you, you can go and bring back water with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas Or you can stand in front of the tent of my women and children and protect them from the slaps they're going to get. Or you can bring back the torn bodies of my companions with me when I ride out to send them my farewells. Where would you want to serve? What would you want to do on that day? On the morning of Ashura, uh, I would most likely beg Abba Abdullah to help the children and the women within the tents because who do they have to turn to when you have tents burning, calamities everywhere, they've got nowhere to turn to support them. What would you do when the army comes to slap the three-year-old girl? To pull her earrings off her face? What would you do when they use the wooden part of the spears to lash the woman? And why them? Why not Abbas salam, when you see him carrying the water, coming back to the tents with no arms? Why the women and children over him? Abbas he's, he's had the, the, the strength, he's got the, he had the power. The children haven't seen anything, they've never been through anything similar to what's happened to them. Protect the children, you know, cover them. Just take what, instead of them going through the pains and the suffering that is happening to them. So children. They play a big part in on the day of Ashura. Now imagine one day you come home from work and your family are all running around frantically in your house. One person's 
organizing fruit, another person's organizing sweets, another person's making tea. And you finally grab hold of one of them and you say, what's going on? Why is everyone rushing around the house? And they say, we've got guests. And you say, well, who's come to see us? And they reply, not see us. They've come to see you. So you say, who is it? And they say, they've been waiting for you in the living room. Go and see them. So you come to the living room, you open the door, you walk in and you see sitting there in your living room waiting for you is Abba Abdullah Hussain. In that moment, what would you want to say to him? What would you want him to say to you? I would ask him, how? How is everything happening? How? How am I involved? What did I do to, to be blessed with, with his parents? And him sitting in front of me, it would, it would, I wouldn't know what to say. So now he gets up to leave your house as a final farewell if you like. He turns around to say something to you. What would you want it to be? How would you let him go? I would ask him to take me with him. If he doesn't need anything, I'm at his service. And it wouldn't be easy to let go of such an idol. So you mentioned you wanted to leave with him. What about your mom, dad, brothers? How would you separate from them? In Ziyarat Ashura, it says, Baby and Wamui. My whole family, I would sacrifice them to go and help my master, Abdullah. So at the beginning, I asked you about 1400 years ago. Now, knowing what you know about Ashura, knowing about the different events that took place, it might be easy to say, if I was there, I would do this, or if I was there, I would stop that, or if I was there, I would try and protect this person from this calamity falling upon their head. A lot of us forget that in this day and age we have an Imam with us and although he isn't apparent and visible to us he's still among us and in a way he's given us the choice of how we want to serve him by physically not being here and telling us for example Muslim do this, Muslim take that, Muslim go and help this person what do you think you've done for the 12th Imam? What do you think the 12th Imam deserves from you? You who's so ready to sacrifice everything for one Imam, why not for this one too? Imam al Mahdi Ajallah Faraja Sharif is the Imam of our time and just like Imam al Hussein, his, his word is my command. 
whatever he needs. You know? And from whatever it is, from if it's small or big or something that no one wants to do, I'm more than happy to do it. People who may not want to do certain things because because of the part that it does play. But personally I'm happy with anything that comes to me and I will be honoured to to do it. Oh, God.